Hey friends, let's just dive right into this because I want you to see what my weekend looked like. Do you see my face in that photo? I'm surrounded by my beautiful children, my amazing husband, gorgeous pumpkins. It was the perfect fall day. And I was a little bit crazy. You want to know why? Because I didn't get to paint one single moment this weekend. Not one. I was surrounded by beauty and art and inspiring stuff for the entire 48 hours, but mama didn't get to paint. So yeah, that's the frustration you're seeing in my face. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling you can relate to it. So let me tell you, we went on a pumpkin walk this weekend. It was gorgeous. I was dying a little bit inside. And the next day we went to a fall fest and we got to watch this dude marble paper and a million other things. I decorated gourds. I was one of the kids, but like I said, mama didn't get to paint. And it got me to thinking, it got me to thinking a little bit about creative inventory. Okay. So let's go watch this. Listen up. We're in for a fun ride with this week's video friends. We all have so many obligations whether we're taking care of elderly parents or um, night school and getting our college degree on the side or uh, we're, we're, we're mamas and, and, and caretakers and I could go on and on or, oh yeah, uh, owning businesses and having a demanding career. You know where I'm at. There are so many reasons that you are going to have to be pulled away that you will be pulled away from your creative journey. There's so many reasons you're only going to have five minutes to paint something, create something rather than 30 or an hour. I'm here to help you with the mindset of being okay with that and knowing what to do next. So I want you to grab a cup of tea, coffee, whatever it is you drink. And sit with me for a moment. I am going to talk. I know you're going to have to look at this mug for a little bit longer. Because today is about recognizing our chaos and working in that chaos to create a creative inventory for our lives. So two things that you're going to do that you're going to learn to do to live in the chaos creatively. And number one is you're going to lean into the fact that life is crazy and you're always going to be pulled in more directions than you probably want to be. You're going to shift from a mindset of frustration about the fact that you don't have the half hour that you want to make your art to a mindset of excitement and anticipation of finding creative inspiration wherever you may be. I never thought I would say this, but I want you to become a hoarder of sorts. I know that's a charged word, but really I want you to become a collector, an inventory maker. And what does that look like? That looks like your phone being full of photos that you've taken that don't have a single face in them that are just photos that inspire you of, of landscapes, of random shop windows, of, I could go on and on. I think you know what I mean. I posted about this concept a little bit on TikTok and YouTube recently, and so many people actually responded and said, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. I literally will pull over on the side of the road to take a picture of a gorgeous sunset. You're already doing this. You maybe just haven't put a name to it. I know how you feel like you're in this space, you're in this chaos, you're in the grocery store with your kids or whatever it may be. And you're thinking, gosh, I wish I could use this time, this pocket of time to try out that new palette that I picked up or to even try watercolor at all for the first time. And then you feel guilty. I know you do. And I think part of this becoming a creative inventory maker is about letting go of that guilt. It's a huge part. So I give you permission to let go of that guilt because it's okay to want time. It's okay to crave art making. And it's especially okay to crave that art making space and time when you're doing something else, especially 
when you're fulfilling an obligation to someone else. Let go of that guilt because that guilt is heavy and that guilt can negatively impact your creative journey. I, I, I promise you, I speak from experience and hopefully this is a light bulb moment for many of you. You're like, oh yeah, girl. When you become adept in creating inventory, mental, physical inventory of what inspires you, you are very aware of your surroundings. So let me give you a few examples. So this weekend, we went on that pumpkin walk and my 22 month old daughter is running around like a crazy person everywhere, tripping, falling, stubbing her knees, like stubbing knees, I don't know, stubbing toes. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and my son is on a scavenger hunt and like, I, just wanted to sit down with my little travel set and paint the gorgeous gourds and pumpkins that were everywhere. That, that's all I wanted to do. I mean, I, I wanted to be there as their mom and I was, but I wanted to just dive in to making some art that I was inspired to make in the moment. But the thing is, I was aware of the fact that that wasn't gonna happen. I was also super aware of the fact that I could just pick up my camera and snap a few photos for later. It sounds so simple, right? You're probably thinking, Christy, but yeah, of course I could just snap photos, but do you? Do you snap the photos of the thing that randomly pops up? I mean, let's be honest, a pumpkin walk is not random. I planned to go there. I knew it was gonna be beautiful. But what about those moments that you don't know are gonna be beautiful? What about the moment when you're at the grocery store that mundane task that we all have to do. And for some reason, the produce display that day looks really gorgeous, more so than it ever had before. Do you take out your phone and snap a photo? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about finding that inspiration, those moments in the middle of the mundane that you can bank for later. You can bank for 1130 when everybody's in bed, the dishes have been done, the washers running, and you have a pocket of time, finally. You can pull out that photo of that amazing vegetable produce display that you were inspired by in the grocery store. I know it sounds ridiculous, but these are the moments, this is the mindset that separates the person who continues and propels forward their creative journey and the person who just can't seem to get any momentum. Yeah, it's being that weirdo. <laughs> you gotta be the weirdo in the grocery store. <laughs> and then there's the obvious stuff. The, you know, a creative lifestyle. And I think that's really at the heart of what I'm talking about here. I want you to develop a creative lifestyle. And so that is seeking out crossover experiences. So how can I spend time with my family, my husband, my sister, whomever it might be, not not create art during that time, but still have an immersive creative experience. So seek out those beautiful times uh, where you can go and watch demonstrations in the open air and wander around a beautiful property or you know, on and on and on. There's so many things that you can seek out to kind of bolster and build up this creative lifestyle. So you constantly felt fed, even if it's on a very, very subtle level. Yeah, so I want you to stop feeling that constant tug of war. Like, I want to be doing this. I want to paint with my new watercolors today, but I need to do this. Like, I want it to stop being an either or conversation for you. Because when it stops being either or, the frustration subsides the guilt subsides. So let me give you an example. So we were out at the pumpkin walk, didn't get to paint, feeling that tension, came home and I was like, gosh, I really need to go for my walk. I go for daily walks. I promise you, this is not a health video, I promise. But I knew that there was just one more thing that I needed to do that was going to prevent me from having time to paint. But I also knew that my soul needed it, my body needed it, all the things. So I went on that walk, but I decided to forage during that walk because I really felt 
like I needed more of a creative outlet that day. And I knew as the day was going on that I probably wasn't going to end up painting and I didn't. So I decided to forage on my walk and I found this beauty and I found this pine cone and just on and on. I harvested some, some moss and, and so see, see how the two, how the, 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 the two parts of your life can do this instead of this, right? And now you're probably wondering, okay, Christy, you've taken the photos and you've foraged your stuff. What the heck do I do with all that once I actually sit down and have a moment to paint? Well, let me show you. And the key to this, when you have a moment to sit and paint and it's in proximity to a time where you've taken a bunch of photos or collected some bits on a walk or whatever it may have been, the key is to not overthink how you're going to be inspired by it. The key is just to sit down, pick up the thing, grab your supplies and get to it. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, well, wait, I have a question. <laughs> Do you wanna paint with me? Finally, come on, let's go. I've gathered all these goodies, right? I went on that walk. And I knew that I needed to feed my creative soul. So I foraged and I've got all this now in front of me. <laughs> what am I going to do with it? So the key to this, the key to this. Oh, and remember, sorry, I'm a little manic right now, but it's a good manic. It's a fun manic. I'm really excited. Remember too, that I have all those visions of pumpkins swirling in my head. I'm just having like a Christmas moment, like visions of sugar plums, but it's like pumpkins. Anyway, Sorry, I digress, but I still am dreaming about all that gorgeous pumpkin amazingness from my trip the other day as well. So what in the world am I going to create? Well, here's the thing. I don't want you to get too stuck in the what should I, how should I, when should I of it all. You've got this creative inventory now that you've amassed, you've collected, you've foraged, you've photographed. Just dive in. Sit down amidst the mess. Don't even clean up your space. Don't get, quote, ready to paint, to be creative. Just sit down, grab the closest bit of watercolor paper you've got, grab the first brush you see, grab the first palette you see, and get to it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm using Academy watercolor paper. I'm removing this painting that I did earlier, uh, which I really like, by the way. Anyway, oh, and by the way, you see how I did that? You see how I complimented myself? This is something I talk about all the time on this channel. And if you haven't watched this video yet, you need to. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and say, pause this one and go and watch that one first because it really ties in beautifully with this whole creative mindset discussion. Anyway, Wow, I'm really distracted today, but it's all good. We're here for it. I'm using Academy watercolor paper. Got my spray bottle. I'm spraying down the page a little bit. I've got some inks here that I'm feeling like I need to use because when I'm feeling extra, ink is always a good idea because it travels and explodes like nothing else. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm just gonna start laying down some of this ink on the wet paper to see what it does and I'm just going for it. I've got all my goodies around me and let's just see what happens. I'm grabbing this leaf, this yellow leaf. I don't know what kind of tree it was from and I'm setting it down to create kind of like a stencil. Yeah, that's fine. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna paint around it, spray around it. Oh my gosh, friends, did you see that pink? Did you see it? Did you see it do its thing? Holy moly. I'm even using a paper towel to kind of wipe down some areas. Friends, I seriously, legit don't have a plan. Now, let me say this. You may come off of your creative inventory making experience with a distinctive plan in mind of what you want to create. And that's fine too. You don't have to be crazy like me. The point of today, the point of this moment, and the point of me just talking endlessly, it seems, is that I want you to learn how to create the inventory. What you do after it is, is all you. It's all you, boo. All right, here we go. I pulled that magic leaf out, that watercolor leaf that I found, because I got to do something with it. I don't know what yet, but I got to do something with it. 
Hey friends, if you are enjoying this crazy time together today, give this video a boop. That's a like. Let YouTube know that other people should get in on the fun. And don't forget to subscribe too, because let me tell you what, you don't want to miss any of my uploads. I do them twice a week-ish, and we always have a good time. I'm going to trace this bad boy because I just feel like I don't want to deal with the stress of trying to sketch a maple leaf perfectly. I think this is a maple. So I'm going to sketch or excuse me, I'm going to trace this bad boy. And I think it's just going to be a pattern day. I mean, you know me, I love patterns. So not a big shocker. I'm grabbing my three quarter inch flat wash brush. And with a semi clean brush, I'm just going to paint in my outline, my trace with water because I want to get some juicy wet on wet going on. Wet on wet, you know, wow. If you're not sure what wow is, this is the video you should watch next. Okay. So if you want to know more about wow and just beginner kind of the basics, the amazing basics of watercolor, this is the video to watch anyway. And then I'm going to start dropping in color. Uh, am I using the original leaf as direction? Sure. Am I trying to make a realistic leaf? Nope, not on your life. Uh, I'm still using this flat wash brush and I'm heading into that little area that I kind of stenciled with the other leaf. And now I'm just filling in with some yellow because that's fun. That feels good. I'm working back and forth between the two leaves. And now I feel like challenging myself with a little bit of a fern. I've switched to my cat's tongue brush and I'm just making fern like leaf marks as I go. Friends, this video isn't about how to paint leaves, so I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of painting leaves. But if you're curious about how I paint leaves, you need to watch this video. Wow, I'm sending y'all everywhere today, but it's fun, right? I'm giving you a little like tour of my YouTube channel. Anyway, back to this pattern. Remember friends, using your creative inventory, there's no rules. One of my mantras is forget rules, forget right, remember joy. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It's so important. It's so important. So the minute you start to feel that tension, especially when you've started a painting that has no direction, no plan, no sketch, no nothing. When you feel that tension of, oh, I don't know what to do. Push through it. Oh, I don't know if this is quote right push through it, just make a mess, get in there and just have a blast. Try to push through all that self-questioning that happens so often when we're making art. I am working back and forth. I did a little bit more work on this fern-like bit here. I went back to my yellow leaf, added some green because it was still wet. And now I'm going right over top of this pink with like green leafy moments. And up here in the yellow, I'm doing the same thing. And while things are wet, remember the wet page is an opportunity. So make sure that you're getting in there and dabbing in some other colors on top of your green. I'm always very mindful of what areas of my paper is still wet because that means I get to still play and I get to still see explosions and it's, it's good stuff. I can go back in with pencil if I want to. I am thinking about composition a little bit, but I'm trying not to overthink it. There's some things going on in this composition right now that uh, really break some rules, but I'm okay with it because this is about me just having a moment with myself and my paintbrushes and my paint. This isn't about me solving the world's problems in art with my time, right? Don't take yourself too seriously, friends. All right, moving on. I'm going back into that maple leaf friends and adding some more color because she had a lot of life, a lot of fun going on. Some more leaves. When I was on my walk the other day, there were these gorgeous, um, they almost look tropical. So I'm, um, these tropical leaves, well, they weren't tropical. I'm in Northeastern Pennsylvania for goodness sake, but they felt tropical, but they were turning fall colors. So they were going from greens with red stems to yellow. So I'm remembering that now. And you know what too you can do? You may want to start a journal. Maybe you're not a photo taker. Maybe you're not a forager, but maybe you love to write. So you can create your creative inventory by writing ideas down. That's another great way to go. Adding a little spatter. Love, love, love. I added another fern in here, friends. Compositionally, I wish I had made a different choice. 
I wish I had kind of flip flopped it with the point kind of facing in the other direction, but whatever, working through it, adding some more basic teardrop shaped leaves. I'm back with my flat wash brush and I'm going to be wrapping it up here soon because I'm feeling like this is really fun and I don't want to overwork it. And it feels just colorful. It, it really feels like a visual representation of my weekend. It does. I feel the pumpkin walk in there. I see so many of the bits and, and pieces that I picked up on my walk. I, I, I can sense the joy that I felt when I was chasing my crazy kiddos all weekend long in the beautiful fall foliage. I really do. I feel it. Do you feel it? You can get a sense of the fun I had this weekend from looking at this craziness, right? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Woo! I love it. All right, all right, all right. Did you make it to the end of this crazy video? I hope you did. And if this is the first time you've experienced me, um, I'm sorry. And that was fun, right? <laughs> here she is. I'm totally here for it. I, I wasn't sure as I was doing this, but I'm here for her. This is good stuff. If you feel like you need a little more structure and I get that you might be feeling it and craving that, I want you to head here because that video is going to give you the structure that you need at this point. And I think it's a really good follow-up to the awesomeness that just happened here. Okay, friends, happy painting. See you next time.